G'day, I'm Dr. Kev, and in this video we're going to look at some of the tools and methods that I've used to analyse suspension geometry. Welcome to Car Design Workshop. Look, I got a level with you. I'm a little bit of a suspension nerd. I just love the mechanisms involved and the challenge of trying to get them to work well. And part of that, I've spent a fair bit of time looking at suspension geometry. I started to get serious about suspension geometry as early as the year 2000. And since then, I've tried a lot of different ways. I designed suspension systems as a student involved with Formula SAE. And while doing that, programmed a number of different ways to analyze the geometry. Then I did a short stint in a motorsport consultancy company. And as part of that, I led a small team where we developed the company's very first release for a, a kinematics analysis package. And now that I teach in engineering, I just tend to maintain my own dodgy versions of these programs. There's a lot we can learn when we're doing geometry calculations. When the car's moving, we can look at things like how the springs dampers and anti-roll bars and third springs are moving and their motion ratios. We can see how the wheel will move forwards and backwards and alter the wheelbase of the car, as well as the movement of the wheels uh, laterally side to side and track changes. We can look at the orientation of the wheel, whether that's camber or toe. And we can start to analyze geometry that's going to affect how the suspension is loading. And this includes the slope of the instantaneous centers, mechanical trails and scrub radiuses, as well as the steering, where we can see how the camber is going to change as a function of steer. And we can look at how the inside and the outside wheels are going to steer at different angles. And we might look at the Ackerman effect in that. And one advantage of doing the geometry calculations and really focusing on just the kinematics is it can be incredibly fast to calculate. And this allows us to iterate our designs very quickly. Now there are some limitations to only looking at the kinematics and the geometry of the suspension. And if we really want to fully analyze a car, we do need to consider the forces involved. The methods I'm going to show in this video don't really analyze any deflections as well. So there's no deflections of bushes, there's no deflection of the suspension components such as A-arms, and there's certainly no deflection of the tire. And the deflection of the tire is really the big error that we would see when we're just looking at kinematics. We'll tend to assume that the center of the contact patch is the center of where the loads are being applied and the main point that we're considering in kinematics, but that is actually going to be changing as we change the camber of a tire as we change the slip angle of the tire. To address this, we'd really want to be looking at some multi-body analysis that includes forces and deflections, something like the Atom software package, which is super powerful and what you would see in uh, automotive manufacturers and design companies. But that can have its downsides too, especially when you're looking at doing short-term uh, race car development projects, where you're not at the highest level of, of competition, or if you're designing and building cars at home. To do this analysis accurately, you need to have a lot of inputs, and many of those you're not going to have. The main one being the data around the tire. It can also be very time consuming to do the setup in these programs. And if your inputs aren't good, then your outputs aren't going to be good. And that's the typical case of garbage in, garbage out. I have spent a little bit of time in these uh, sorts of software, enough to know that it's not really something that is going to be easy to fit into the workflow that I generally use when developing suspension systems. But I'm absolutely happy to be told off in the comments by any professionals that might be watching this. So if we are looking at doing a kinematics analysis of the suspension system, there's three main ways we might go about this. One of these would be to utilize our normal CAD modeling or drawing package, which can be really good if we're doing a one-off or we're not really trying to do a lot of iterations. If we're regularly working on this sort of problem, then we might look at doing some professional software. Have a look at a couple of those a little bit later. The third, and probably the least sensible approach, is to create your own custom programs to do that. And because it's the least sensible approach, it's probably what I've done most of the time. 
And there are a number of ways that we can create our own programs to solve geometry problems. And I'm going to quickly show you what I've done in this space from being a student doing it to running the Optimum Kinematics team to what I use now. In the year 2000, I was involved with a few other students at the University of Western Australia and we started the first West Australian Formula student team or Formula SA team. It was a fantastic experience, but it was really daunting to go from having read a lot of books and been interested in cars to having to try and do this ourselves. And in Perth, Western Australia, it's not the epicenter of automotive engineering. There wasn't really many people there that we could talk to to get ideas of how to design cars. And in my particular interest was designing some of these suspension systems. At the start, it was largely a 2D approach that I took. I did some uh, 2D sketches and models and created a, a few Excel programs, did expand that into 3D in the CAD, but pretty much everything I did in the very first car is lost to the world. But it's okay, it's not a really big loss. And then over the next three and a half years, I started developing code in MATLAB. Now the main approach that I was using was doing direct geometry solutions. So I would move the suspension through its motion, recording each position, and then I would transform it to move the chassis instead of the suspension. Now I mainly did this with double A arms. There was one case that I did help somebody locally working on a Lotus 7 clone, and we did do a four bar linkage at the back end of that with a panide bar. Pretty much all of the simulations that I could dig up were double A arms with rockers. These programs ran pretty quick for the time, but they were fragile. A double A arm system is a three dimensional four bar linkage. And if I would move the lower arm into a particular position, there are actually two solutions for it. One of those would make sense and one of them wouldn't. And these two particular solutions are the solutions for the quadratic formula. So there was a couple of little dodgy checks in the codes just to make sure that they would work. By the time I had got to the last car that I was doing at UWA, the program was running reasonably well. We were able to feed in data from the car running around a track and actually have a look at what the geometry was doing in the car in, in its real motions. And this was pretty cool stuff at the time. I had helped win a couple of design events in the US Formula SAE comp and helped me with a few job offers as well. As a student, my PhD involved wrapping evolutionary algorithms around simulations, some of which were geometry simulations. In putting together some of the visuals for this video, it was a lot of fun actually. It was cool to unearth some of the code that I had been working on 20 years ago. I had to fix some of the commands as MATLAB has changed since that time, but this was necessary because the original videos that I'd created in, say, 2005 were potato spec, and they needed to be updated to a higher resolution and probably lose some of those eye cancer colors. In fact, I was pretty surprised to find a version of the code that could be made to work at all. Once I'd finished up as a student, I went to work at Optimum G in the US, and while I was there, I had the opportunity to lead a small group in creating the company's very first kinematics analysis software. I'm very proud of the work that we did there. We got the software from nothing to an alpha version in a very short space of time, and the team there had some of the most capable people that I've ever had the fortune to work with. Now, I can't really say much about the insides of that software. It has been modified a fair bit from when I was involved, but it's still for sale. And if you were interested in doing a lot of geometry work, I'd actually recommend it. It's a good piece of software. It's reasonably easy to use. Now the program here uses a different calculation method. Instead of a direct geometry calculation, we're solving a series of linear equations. I don't want to get too complex on the maths here, but what we basically do is move the chassis a little bit and then we will find all of the lengths of everything are wrong. So we would move each of the positional variables just a little bit to find out what directions they have to head in to reduce the amount of error. And this is calculating uh, what we'd say is a matrix of partial derivatives. 
Now this is an iterative method and unlike the direct geometry approach, it actually has a little bit more error, but it's far more robust a method. And it's pretty easy to end up defining a number of different suspension types. Each suspension type is just a different series of constraints and positional variables. And this meant that if we wanted to put something like a NASCAR suspension system in there, we didn't have to recreate the geometry calculations from scratch. We just needed to define a different set of constraints, different set of variables. But each of the suspension types is hard coded in. Now it's a huge step to go from doing scripts in MATLAB to a fully functioning program and it really involves a lot of work on a graphical user interface where you're focused on inputs and then outputs, how to analyze those and really trying to understand how the customer is going to use that software. So you really need to make sure that it's not just a robust calculation method but also that people could use it in different ways and take different approaches to get their answers and it's still going to work okay. I learned an absolute heap about how to do this programming to produce a professional product and probably the main thing I took away from it is I'm probably not that keen to do that again. So now I'm back to MATLAB again. I don't really focus on a graphical user interface I will produce graphics in the project, but really just to use it as a sanity check and as a way to show videos and just that it's exciting to watch. But the main inputs and the main outputs are text-based. The software that I use now is actually the result of an idea I had on the way to work one day while I was thinking about how we'd approached it in Optimum G a long time uh, before. I thought of different ways of defining the variables and constraints and bodies in the program. Now the math approach is similar to what's in Optimum Kinematics or Optimum K, but there was nothing really unique about there. We were borrowing from uh, what other people had done in that space. But I figured out a way to solve things a lot more efficiently than what I had done earlier. And it allowed the program to run fast enough even when using the interpreted code in MATLAB rather than having to compile it. But that was pretty much where the advantages end. The code that I'm using has got some pretty nasty and dirty quick coding in it, poor documentation, and it's not even that user friendly, even to its creator. Well, one of the things that I do now is I am a faculty advisor for the ECU racing team, and the team was using Optimum Kinematics and recommended to use it as well. And they started to develop different suspension types that weren't built into Optimum Kinematics, especially as they were playing around with four bar linkages with the D on rear ends. So I basically tidied up the code, wrapped a little bit of a GUI around it so the students could use it. And as the students were coming up with different suspension options, I would just code in the different uh, variables and constraints into the different matrices. Now it still uses similar graphics to what I had done as a student. In fact, I reused some of that older code. But I did add in the ability to load 3D models for bodies and chassis, mainly because computers are a heck of a lot faster now than they were in 2005. So what it means for Project 171 is that I have a kinematics program that I can use to have a look at how the suspension moves. Now if I didn't have this program, I would probably just approach this in CAD. The old school way to do kinematics analysis was just to draw the suspension in multiple locations on a drawing board. Now this had problems when you were starting to look at 3D effects, but there's a lot of things you could do to make some suspensions a lot more 2D in nature without suffering too much. Moving from the drawing board to CAD allows you to do pretty much the same thing in 3D. Now you have to model the suspension anyway if you're going to make it, so it's pretty convenient once you've got that to just move it around in CAD. Now it doesn't make it quick to iterate with, it, it makes it hard to see some of how the geometry relates to each other and how sensitive it is. But if you're not doing too many iterations, or you take a model and massively simplify it into just the pivots and the geometry that matters, it can be a pretty feasible way of doing a reasonable analysis.
Now, SolidWorks does have motion simulations, but I find them a bit of a pain to set up, so I haven't really bothered. Although one of our students did a fantastic job of doing that for one of the cars, and I'd recommend it for people to have a look at if they, they had the cab package and didn't want to buy a professional kinematic software. Now, if you do have a little bit of money to spend and you want to get yourself a kinematic software or something to do suspension geometry, there's a number of options. I'd obviously recommend Optimum Kinematics. There are a lot of things that we did in that software that were really designed for creators of vehicles. There are some others around as well. Dynatune, I think, does a product. Sosprog 3D is still around. There's a few there. It, a bit of a search on the internet will find, find you those. Well, now that you've seen what I've done in the past and how I've been involved with this, at least briefly, the question remains, what should I do differently? Well, I probably should do some more multibody stuff, either with atoms or, or something similar. I have done a few programs of multibody dynamics problems, but I could get a bit more serious and probably should program using Python. There's some really good libraries available for this stuff. But the reality is, I just don't get that much time to program. And I have a workflow that does reasonably well. And the geometry calculations is only just a part of that workflow. I'm a big fan of using tools that you understand exactly how they work and their limitations. And if we think about simulations, whether it is kinematic simulations that are just looking at geometry or more advanced multibody simulations, they are all just approximations of the real world. No matter how good your simulation is, there are going to be differences between what you're simulating and what ends up in the final car. If the simulations are more accurate, maybe it means that I get to avoid a couple of silly mistakes, or I can reduce the amount of testing that I have to do to develop the car. But given that we've got to do the testing and development, and it's fairly fun anyway, I'm happy with some software that I've put together and understand okay and can use fairly quickly. If you have any feedback on any of this, please feel free to put the comments down. I, I love reading them and I do try to respond to anything that is a question. And I hope some of this may have helped give you some ideas for how you might do your own workflow for your own design projects. Thanks for your time.